Welcome back. If you're just joining us, you are watching Metropole Business Center right here on Metropole TV with your truly Nina Shuban. And at this particular point, we would like to talk about the state of the judiciary assessing David Maraga's tenure as Chief Justice. And joining me virtually is an advocate of the High Court, Jose Manuel. Very good morning to you, Jose. Morning, Nina. How are you doing? Um, very well. Thank you so much for joining us. Now, I'd like us to start off with um, getting your thoughts on Chief Justice Maraga's tenure as the head of the judiciary. What are your thoughts on that? Thank you very much, uh, Nina. I'm sure you're aware that the Chief Justice issued a letter on Friday indicating that he will be proceeding to his leave ahead of his retirement come January 12th. And uh, he instructed the Deputy Chief Justice to take over the office during the period he will be away on leave and upon his retirement and until the Judicial Service Commission appoints a new Chief Justice. There is much that can be said about Chief Justice Maraga. I'm sure uh, his term started from uh, the year 2016 going forward to January 2021. I believe he has had a share of successes and losses uh, within the period he was at the helm of the, of the judiciary. The first being uh, the presidential petition number one, which nullified presidential elections for the first time. The third Supreme Court to do the same in, the first in Africa and the third in the world. I think that was the biggest decision that uh, happened during his reign. Mm -hmm. We also have his recent advice to the president to nullify the National Assembly for reason that they have failed to meet the constitutional requirement on the, on the gender issue. And that is also a landmark decision that, that will be remembered during his regime. I believe he has had a share of uh, uh, losses too. Mm -hmm. There have been uh, tremendous fights within the executive, between the executive and the judiciary in the recent past. And I think most people have attributed those fights uh, to the president's utterances after his elections were nullified in 2017, that eventually he will revisit that decision. And I believe this, the judiciary at large has suffered from uh, that dispute between the executive arm of government and the judiciary arm of government. And I think going forward, I believe if we do not get a strong CJ like David Maraga, who stood for the rule of law, it would be very easy for the executive to infringe or rather get into the functions and the independence of the judiciary. Oh. Uh, as, a, as a legal practitioner, I will give him 95 out of 100. Mm -hmm. Uh, for, for being a, a CJ who was conversant with the duties of his office, at the same time ensuring that the rule of law is, is respected. All right. Um, it's funny because that was actually my next question to you, uh, which you've fully answered. From where you see it, what situation did he handle best during his tenure? And what did he handle, um, or rather what was worse for him? Who Now, um, Jose, who would be the best to replace him as Chief Justice? It is too early in the day to predict who will be the next Chief Justice, but I have seen uh, so many uh, senior and respected judges and also advocates who are interested in the position. As I indicated, it's a process, it's a rigorous process that will in require interviews, which interviews I believe will be uh, uh, on, on publicized. I, I believe there will be uh, a process of applications, uh, those interested to apply, then the same will be shortlisted and then we'll have public interviews. The Judicial Service Commission will recommend one person to the president for purposes of uh, swearing in uh, the new CJ. It, it's important to actually appreciate the fact that the executive does not have a hand, whereas it has an interest in the judicial process and they want a person who will be able to be uh, uh, way who will be able to be interfered with and i believe that has happened before it will be a very rigorous process because there are so many people interested in the decision that the judicial service commission is going to make mm -hmm. there have been allegations that the judicial service commission has been infiltrated by commissioners who have the interests of the executive 
there have been indication that indeed there are uh, applicants who are state sponsored to take up the position as as a practitioner of law and uh, uh, from where i sit as an advocate i think maraga has made the judiciary as has actually brought the 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 independence of the judiciary to another level, and it would be a risk endeavor to have someone who do, who does not who do, does not appreciate the separation of, of power principle, and at the same time the independence of the judiciary, which is key in the decisions that they make. We'll be watching and uh, looking into the process itself, and I believe uh, civil 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 societies and the law set of Kenya will be interested on who is shortlisted and whether they have a clean record mm -hmm. and whether they have had interactions with the executive before because that position does not require someone who is a, a friend to the executive mm -hmm. remember the decision most decisions that come from the judiciary are decisions that are most of the time against the government and that is the purpose of the judiciary to check the extras in government decisions in government remember the president in the recent past under presidential executive order number one uh, where he purported to transfer judicial functions mm -hmm. to ministries which is an extremely grave decision that was given through an executive order mm -hmm. the president did not appreciate the fact that the the judiciary is an independent arm of government and it ought to be independent as per the provisions of the constitution i therefore th uh, think that it will be an interesting period mm -hmm. where, within which we'll be able to know who the government wants and who the people wants i hope that uh, the people will prevail all right, Hazel, let's, look at, um, uh, let's look into his relationship, uh, CJ Maraga's relationship with the president. What are your thoughts on that? Come up again, Nina. I'm saying let's look into uh, CJ Maraga's relationship with the president. I'd like to hear your thoughts on their relationship. I think the, the, the president's relationship with Atom Maraga has been the worst relationship we've, we've seen in the recent past. And I think it's, it's always almost automatic that if the chief justice who runs the judicial arm of government, there is the, it's almost uh, certain that they cannot be friends with the executive. Mm -hmm. the, executive the, the purpose of the judiciary, the judiciary is to actually check the excesses of government most of the time and under the principle of checks and balances the executive ought under the law to comply with the decisions given by the judiciary the judiciary equally uh, is, is is required to comply you you remember under the judicial service commission act and under the judiciary act and under the constitution of kenya vetting of judges and magistrates and vetting, vetting of judges especially judges of the supreme court is done and the names are recommended to the executive meaning the executive checks the judiciary in terms of its appointment it's the same same thing that happens when the executive uh, does something that is outside the, their mandates or is unconstitutional the judiciary comes in to check the executive mm -hmm. and therefore i think the relationship between the two has been bad and which is good for the rule of law because they cannot be able to, to to have coffee on the same table and smile like everything is okay whereas the rule of law is being trumped upon so the the, the david maraga will go down in our history as one of the chief justice who has stood his ground mm -hmm. even when the executive is hellbent to ensure that the rule of law is broken down he has stood his ground uh he, you have seen uh, the executive trying to manage the budgets of the executive of, of the judiciary uh, denying them funds, uh, but that has not curtailed the the, the 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 spirit of David Maraga to deliver to on its on his mandate. If you've been following, mm -hmm. you've noticed that he has launched, he has opened close to twenty two courts across the country. That has never happened in any regime. He has opened high courts within the country that are now uh, courts that give people access to justice. He has opened uh, several courts in places where uh, you could not expect a court. Like in Mandera, uh, he has opened courts in places where the courts were far to, like high courts are very far in, mm -hmm. in, in Mutunga's time. We didn't have 
enough high courts and people could travel places to access justice. I believe he has done tremendously well in terms of access to justice and we give it to him, regardless of the fact that the executive has curtailed its, its, the judiciary budget. So the relationship is so, and I think, and I pray that whoever comes in will also have a, that kind of relationship because it works for the rule of law and it helps the executive to actually manage the powers that they have and to work within the confines of the law. All right. Um, I'd like us to take a look at the judiciary as a whole. What is the state of um, the judiciary? What would you say needs to be changed? Come up again. Then looking at the judiciary as a whole, what is the state of the judiciary according to you and what exactly would you say needs to be changed? The judiciary as it is, I believe um, we have had uh, challenges here and there, especially of shortage of judges. Remember, the president has refused to swear in the 41 judges. Now there are 40, one of the, judge, uh, one of the judges was shortlisted for purposes of swearing passed on last month, unfortunately. unfortunately. I believe that is one way the executive is muzzling the judiciary. Remember, the judges who are supposed to be sworn in will serve citizens. And I think the judiciary, the, the executive does not appreciate the fact that the, the greatest consumer of the judicial process are Kenyans, not David Maraga. David Maraga and the judges who are, who are already appointed or intend to be appointed are individuals who be who be receiving their salaries as, as per the law, and the government cannot deny them that. The people who will suffer because of lack of judges are Kenyans who want to access those services. I think what needs to be changed is to ensure that the government complies with the law. The judges were shortlisted. They went for, through the interviewing process. They were found to be qualified by the Judicial Service Commission. The names were recommended to the president almost five months ago. If you can imagine the backlog of cases in our courts, if we had those for one judges who are to be uh, to go to different stations within the country before the Environment and Land Courts and before the Labor and Relations Courts, we could be having matters and cases determined on time. We could also have the backlog reduced. Whereas the backlog has reduced tremendously from Mutunga's time, David Maraga has tried tremendously to bring down the backlog to half. As we speak, there are very few matters which were filed uh, back in the day from 2001 to 2000, uh, from 19, uh, 1900 to 2000. There are cases which were, were, were not determined as of the time he came to office. He gave priority to the cases of those, uh, those years and they were determined. So I think we need um, to have the executive follow the law, ensure that they, they fund the judiciary properly, and ensure that uh, the complaints which have been made by practitioners, that advocates and any other court users, with regard to specific judges, and magistrates are followed up to ensure that there is no corruption within the judiciary because there are serious allegations that certain judges are corrupt. The Judicial Service Commission has a mandate to ensure that they, it investigates those allegations and actually ensures that those judges are sent home. As far as I'm concerned, if the judiciary is properly uh, uh, given its, its share of budget, run without any interference. But since the executive has an interest, they always um, twist the judiciary by ensuring that they limit the funds so that the judiciary can beg for from the executive such such amount for purpose of its functions. Mm -hmm. And that is a recipe for corruption. And that's why we want a firm and strong judicial officer to take the helm of the judiciary to avoid a situation where Kenyans are disenfranchised of the right to access to justice and the rule of law. All right. And um, in detail, Wakili, um, maybe you could tell us what is the procedure that will be followed to choose the next CJ? Under Article 161, the Constitution does, does not create a vacuum. And that is the reason why we have the Deputy Chief Justice in office. The Chief Justice will retire on 12th of January 2021 and he is, is, out, is away on leave within, uh, from today until then. 
He has instructed uh, the Deputy CJ, Philomena Mwilu, to take over the office to act as the acting Chief Justice as required under the Constitution and under Article 161. And I believe the Judicial Service Commission Act Section 5 requires that there be, the, in the absence of the CJ, there be the Deputy CJ to take over the helm of the office in acting capacity for the period where, while the Judicial Service Commission is uh, undertaking the the, the, the shortlisting and interviewing of uh, uh, possible occupants of that office. So I think what will ensue is that the Deputy Chief Justice will take over the helm. At the same time, the Judicial Service Commission will be able to advertise for that vacant position for a certain period of time. I think it will be a short period of time. Okay. Whereas there are interests uh, that are ensuing, there's a, they, there are allegations that some of the Commissioners who sit at the Judicial Service Commission have different interests. We'll see how the same unfolds as we go forward and see whether there will be any executive influence in, 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 in terms of uh, the, the, the candidate who will be shortlisted for that position. We'll be also watching closely to see whether the shortlisted candidates really qualify because there is uh, it's clear as to who should take that position. The law has provided for uh, the experience that is required for a person to take to the office. Mm -hmm the amount of work that you're supposed to do to qualify and your input into the judiciary at large in the country in terms of uh, precedents, cases you've determined if you're a, a judge. I'm sure some of the judges who sit before the Supreme Court, as we speak, will be having an interest in the matter uh, to, to take up to be uh, chief justice of the country, but history as, 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 as in our history, Mutunga came from the civil service uh, Maraga came from the bench, he was the Court of Appeal uh, president at the time of his appointment. So we don't know whether the next CJ will come from the civil service or from the, the, from the advocates or from the bench. We will be watching and waiting to see how they do the same. But the process ought to be followed under the Judicial Service Commission Act on, on appointment of the judges and under Article 161, which provides the process upon which the Judicial Service Commission should follow until they reach a, a, a determination as to who should take over the office. Okay. Once they reach that determination, the name will be sent to the president for purposes of ensuring that the new CJ is sworn in. Okay. Now, given the case of facing the Deputy Chief Justice, um, what's the likely scenario in the CJ secession process ahead? Well, the effect of Philomena Mwilu's case is that in the event she's found guilty of any offence against the law, she might be required to step down. But that is in the unlikely mm -hmm. event that that happens. I believe she's she's won. Uh, she she was able to win her case in the High Court. I believe the, the cases before the Appellate Court, and the allegations against her as 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 an advocate. And I see it from uh, from the judgment of the High Court were allegations which do not uh, meet the threshold to remove a, 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 a judge of the Supreme Court. Mm -hmm. I believe in the event that that, that happens, and there's also uh, just just a Jibio Juan who's, who's retired, there will be a problem of uh, quorum before the Supreme Court, and it will be rendered uh, functionless on the basis of the absence of the judges. Usually the quorum should be five out of seven judges. However, in the unlikely event that that happens, then there will be a, a, a crisis. However, that crisis will be handled by the Judicial Service Commission because they have the power to ensure that they appoint new judges to that office. Mm. I do not believe and I don't see a situation where Philomena Mwilu will be removed based on the decision of the High Court and I believe that any decision that will come uh, thereafter, she will still serve her term and she, I believe she is one of the candidates who is interested uh, in the position of the CJ. I believe, I'm not sure. Okay, and yes. as we wind up, Wakili, um, how would you say the CJ managed the relations with the executive? Do you think that he was maybe too combative? Come up again. How do you, um, according to you, how did the CJ manage his relations with the executive? Would you say he was too combative? That position requires a person who 
is combative at the same time a person who can speak his mind okay. remember we have had uh, decisions coming from the judiciary that are supporting the executive we have had decisions which don't support the executive mm -hmm. i think the position requires a person who's extremely candid on his position or her position with regard to the rule of law it requires someone who has respect for the constitution mm -hmm. it requires someone who's strong enough to be able to avoid the executive and political the, the politics within the executive and even the legislature the, the the national assembly i think maragas managed to avoid all that whereas uh, there have been indications that he has attended uh, political uh, rallies together with the president and it was a decision which was critiqued for a long time he has tried to avoid uh, political uh, sensational uh, positions even even though he has been issuing statements from the supreme court i believe those statements were based on the frustration and citizens of this country required to know what is happening within the judiciary and so he's whereas he might come out to be extremely compatible mm -hmm. as a as as a, a chief justice we appreciate the position that he he was put in uh, or rather he is in having overturned the decision of the, pre, the, 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 the presidential petition number one of 2017 and the president having said that he will revisit, we have seen him go through a turbulent period uh, regime. However, he has managed to come out strong. He has delivered on his part. He has, uh, he has advised the president to dissolve parliament, which is the right thing to do. And I think, uh, whereas people may think he, he came out compatible, that is the duty that he has been given under the constitution to discharge, which duty requires someone who is able to discharge that duty and, uh, with, with, with uh, the, the required focus and while adhering to the rule of law. All right. Well, thank you very, very much. That was a great conversation from Jose Manuel, who's an advocate of the High Court. I really do appreciate you giving us a few minutes of your time, eh? You're welcome, Nina. Anytime. All right. Have a lovely day. You too. All right. That was Jose Manuel just uh, taking a look at the state of the judiciary, assessing David Maraga's tenure as a chief justice. And with that, we'd like to take a very quick break, and we shall be back with more.